Good Tuesday evening, everybody, live and direct from backyard of House Onik. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with an update as to what you can be seeing across the Mid-South for tonight and into early tomorrow morning when it comes to things astronomical. This is our exclusive astronomy blog called Skyblog 3. Hope you've been enjoying our previous presentations on here, and don't forget about our weather forecast, complete and total. That'll be coming up on our exclusive video weather blog called Weather Overtime in just a little while, so stay tuned for more on that. Rest of the evening, again, great conditions out there for stargazing. For the most part, we have a few clouds out there, but most of what we're seeing for right now is just sporadic stuff. We will be looking for more clouds on the way as we get into tomorrow, and another round of rain, just what we don't need at this time, but we'll talk more about that on uh, weather overtime for more information on that, so stay tuned. Down toward the bottom of the screen, right beneath me, you can see, again, the email address that's also down in the social media uh, scroll, way down toward the lower blue bar on the bottom of your screen there. We can also find more information about what's going on with weather and all kinds of stuff again at our weather page that's down on wrhe.com slash weather and immediately below my email address immediately below me you can see the NASA live feed coming in from the International Space Station. See what is uh, being seen up that direction along with some video and some pr uh, positional markers stuff like that. If you want to see that for yourself uh, go to NASA ISS feed you can get that on NASA TV by their website, or you can pick it up on YouTube and just search NASA ISS Live Feed, and you can find out more about what to see down below. Uh, astronomical data in the red bar scrolling past on the bottom portion of your screen. Let's go ahead and get going tonight with some more of that information from timeanddate.com. We're approaching the first quarter moon. It's almost full. It's a waxing crescent, well, waxing gibbous for right now is what they call it, but that'll be happening in just, again, uh, the next couple of days as it goes toward uh, first quarter, and then eventually toward full, coming up a little bit later on. Sunrise today was at 6.07, sunset tonight at 7.46, just a, about a half an hour from the time that we are taping this. Moonrise today was at 12.06, it'll set tonight at about 1.20, and we've gained another 1 minute and 51 seconds of daylight for today. And again, all that information down on the red bar in the bottom portion of your screen. We are rapidly heading toward nighttime here on the day and night map. We'll be seeing this, the sun rising already on Wednesday morning, way on over toward the area of the Indian Ocean, India, toward the southeastern Air, Asia area into Australia. Looks like a nice sunrise hopefully coming up in and around Africa or so and looking at some quiet conditions into and around much of the area there. Are planets for tonight. Mercury, again, uh, rising and setting very close to the sun. Difficult to see. This information also available from uh, timeanddate.com. If you'd like to go there, great website for keeping track of events, dates, times, time zones, all kinds of neat things like that. Great opportunity to see more. Venus uh, should be viewable before sunrise in the east, rising at about 4.14 in the morning. So a good opportunity to take a look at that. And again, that'll be... Uh, uh, heading up by just a little bit, able to be seeing that there. Mars, again, should be setting in the southwestern skies. That'll be uh, just about, pardon me, from the south to the southwest, somewhere in there, about 9.50 for this evening. Uh, Jupiter should be available after sunset in the southeastern skies and setting at about 5.02 in the morning, almost uh, due west. Uh, Saturn, viewable in the early morning, will be rising in the southeast at about 11.06 this evening, so you should be able to see that uh, relatively nicely and then fading out by the time we head towards south-southwest. Again, more information about this. Uh, good opportunity to see more from uh, timeanddate.com. Got a lot of really neat, cool stuff here uh, at this time about where you can see stuff, when, things like that. Uh, great opportunity to see more on there. Uh, taking a look at the three-day forecast when it comes to anything involving space weather out there, we don't seem to see anything in the way of major storms taking place. Uh, we do have the possibility of some storms coming on through. Uh, it's possible, but we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. All sky cam from ArkansasSky.com showing sunset, but you can see meteors and planets and stars on this pretty easily at nighttime. So take a look at the all sky cam. You might even see a bird with its feet right over the camera lens at some point in time. Visibility for tonight, again, little if anything really going on outside of just these scattered clouds. So you may see a few clouds out there that could cause a bit of a problem with viewing, but otherwise not looking at too much out there. This view courtesy of Penn State Meteorology, so a great place to go to for all kinds of weather information. Let's go ahead and get into it and show you what we can expect for later on tonight when it comes to satellites. Again, not much out there is going to be visible uh, throughout the rest of the evening for tonight. 
that's going to be very bright. When you're looking at the brightness slash magnitude right over here uh, in the uh, second to left hand column, the lower the number, the brighter it is. So this 0.2 from the Falcon 9 rocket booster, that's going to be about the brightest thing you're going to be able to see. And that's going to be happening at about 8.30 tonight, rising in the west, going right past Orion, just to the uh, north portion of the moon, looking just above the moon, and going between the bright star and the constellation Booties the Shepherd, down to around Jupiter, right between that area. So you should be able to see, again, uh, some of this. This will be the brightest thing that we can see out there, and again, it'll be rising in the west just before 8.30, and should look right around Orion. Now, it's going to be dim, but hopefully viewable, but again, a lot of these things, uh, depending on their pass and the angle, probably not going to be able to see it too well. The Tiangong-1 space station I believe it's been decommissioned and will be uh, being brought down deliberately to burn up in the atmosphere over the course of the next several months. That'll be a 1.7, much more dim, but again, you might be able to see it. That'll be rising in the southwest right before the Falcon 9 rocket booster, and that'll be about 826, 827, right on the southern horizon, going through Corvus the Crow. And if you look around 829, very close to the area in and around uh, Jupiter passing right beneath Jupiter right there. That is something you might be able to see uh, right in that area. But once again, it's going to be very, very dim. So you may want to think about getting out to a very dark area away from city lights just to be on the safe side to try to see that, uh, if at all possible. What else can you see tomorrow morning? Well, here's a good one. If you're up very early, the International Space Station will be making a uh, pass from the southern skies, way in the southern skies, at about 4.52 tomorrow morning morning, passing uh, right between Pisces Austrinius and Capricornus, going right through Aquarius, and as Venus is rising tomorrow morning at about 4.56, if we have enough clear skies, you might be able to see this. This should be an interesting combination of having very bright Venus right next to a very bright International Space Station, so that should be interesting if you want to get up very early tomorrow morning, or maybe you're already going to be up, take a look and do some extra stargazing out there for tomorrow. More information, again, available at Heavens Above. That's Heavens hyphen above.com iridium flares nothing flying over tonight or into uh, very late tonight but tomorrow morning there will be a dim iridium flare uh, looks like that one is unfortunately not working so we may have to just well, okay sorry about that this is again a uh, great website to go to, but it does have its issues from time to time. Look to the east-southeast at a very low altitude. Uh, again, that'll be into the area just between Venus and the southern horizon. It should be decently uh, flurry brightness-wise. Iridium satellites are the communication satellite. The company went bankrupt, but the satellites are still up there flying around the Earth and orbiting the Earth. And occasionally, the solar panels rotate at just the right angle, and the sunlight bounces off the panels right down to where we are. And this should be decently bright. It looks like a brighter one will be coming up uh, May 4th in a couple of days on Thursday. That'll be a 4.1, very bright indeed. And a few of the bright ones, a minus 2.2 early in the morning on May 6th. And a couple of ones coming up as we go into the weekend. We'll keep you updated on that. So stay tuned to News Channel 3. Sky chart right now, also available from heavensabove.com, showing you in the moon at about mid-sky. Jupiter rising in the east, but a little bit too bright to show you anything for right now. Let's skip ahead to, say, about 10.15 or so and see that the moon will be heading on over to the eastern skies between Canis Minor and Leo the Lion. Jupiter will be in Virgo approaching mid-sky. And around about midnight or so, we'll go ahead and take it a little bit farther to about uh, midnight. So those of you staying up a little bit later can see a few things. The moon and Jupiter again visible about midnight and Saturn rising just over the southeast horizon. Again, giving cloud cover, you should be able to see something out there at about midnight or so looking southeast. So good news on that. Again, heavens-above.com, great place to go to. Magnetic storm possible this week. A filament on the sun exploded a couple of days ago, hurling what's called a CME or a coronal mass ejection into space. And it could give a uh, glancing blow to the Earth's magnetic field tomorrow and could be some minor geomagnetic storms out there. Our Van Allen belt 
the radiation belts and everything else, the magnetic fields that surround the planet will keep us safe from this, but it is possible we could see something out there. This burst of energy, again, coming on through this view from the uh, Space Weather Prediction Center out there, showing again what we may be taking a look at in the next couple of days. You may see just a little bit of a burst of energy taking place right in the middle of your screen as the sun throws out that energy and goes right past uh, the Earth, right there in the yellow dot that you see at the screen there. That little pulse of energy that goes outwards does look like it's going to be going well away from most of the Earth, but we could catch a tail section of that, so it is possible we could see some effects like maybe some possible radio blackouts or something like that, but could be some auroras out there too, so that could be something to take a look at, especially if you're traveling to uh, areas north on here. Great places to go to for all kinds of information like this, so check out all the information available through these great websites at various locations. If you want to know what some of these things are, just let me know. We had heavens hyphen above, uh, again, for weather, tons of places, spaceweather.com, a great place to go to for information about the sun and meteors and uh, auroras and all kinds of stuff like that. So please keep that in mind. Cassini is on its way, again, onto a beautiful and going to be more than likely a uh, very fiery crash here in the next several uh, months as it gets a little bit closer to Saturn. Today, Cassini dove right between the area between the planet and the rings again. And it's going to be doing that again and again and again and again and again before it gets too close and Saturn's gravity and the orbit just take it right down into Saturn's atmosphere. So Cassini's mission is almost at an end at this time, but it is, again, great to watch uh, this grand finale that's coming up. If you'd like to know more, go to saturn.jpl.nasa.gov and you can find out a whole bunch more as to what's going on with Cassini out there and find out more about how this orbit is going to be affecting uh, the eventual end of the satellite. It's given us some incredible views out there. Really great to see this uh, way that it's going to be uh, going out with a very fiery bang, and it's given us so much in the way of great amounts of visible uh, information about the planet and stuff that we never knew before from a billion miles away, so absolutely incredible. Uh, the next grand finale dive will be taking place in just about six days, so we'll be looking for uh, more information about that uh, coming up pretty soon. The third grand finale orbit, the spacecraft's radio instrument called Radio Science Subsystem, or RSS, is going to be pre performing gravity field measurements using the Doppler shift to study the inside of Saturn, the same technology that we use to to look at tornadoes forming inside thunderstorms. Well, not the same technology, but the same uh, principle to where we see, again, the storm systems inside creating tornadoes moving one direction with the rainfall and moving the other, and we can tell where that spin is taking place. And this radio science instrument studies Saturn's rings as the spacecraft radio signal passes through the rings, all those icy boulders tumbling around there en route to Earth. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens here. Again, six days from now on May 9th, just a a little bit over a week that'll be happening uh, at 11.13 PDT. Let's see, that's uh, 9.13 our time, so a week from tonight should be interesting to see uh, what comes up with that. Great to see this going on. Amazing amounts of science. If you'd like to see even more than this, uh, see a little bit more about the strangest things that we have seen uh, in the solar system. Uh, some of the stuff that comes up with NASA, some of those pictures out there, absolutely incredible. Ten things you need to know for Bay the First for science systems or solar system ex exploration. Absolutely incredible about Titan, Ganymede, Triton, Enceladus, Io, Iapetus, Iapetus, hope I'm saying that right. I think I mispronounced that. And with a name like Onik, I should know better. Uh, all these great moons information that you can take a look at uh, through that. We're going to have that posted to my Twitter page. You can get that at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WRAG3. And also go to my Facebook page at facebook.com slash austinonic WRAG. One word there for great information about what's happening. Again, we'll have more information about what's going on in regards to the ups, what's going on in the skies above us. All kinds of neat stuff happening. So this is your opportunity to learn more about all that, and you can find out more again by emailing me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Don't forget to follow my and subscribe to my YouTube channel where we post all this stuff, and then also keep it tuned to News Channel 3 on air and online for the latest weather, and of course I'll bring you more science information as I can right here. That'll do it for tonight's edition of our astronomy blog from the backyard of House Onic. I'm meteorologist Austin Onic. Thanks for joining me for tonight, and remember whenever it comes to anything involving science or astronomy, please remember to keep looking up. Bye.